Mike, turn your games down. Hi, right, welcome to our TV episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Elberton, and who's my bad batch with me tonight? It's defective clone Carrie Chandler Carusetta on Twitch and YouTube. Clone 99, Bach Wheel from Twitter. Welcome back. Howdy, Robbie Sherman on Conversations with Robbie Sherman. I ain't stuck with funny times, so you guys got me there. <laughs> hey, but you made it. That's what matters. True. So we are here to wrap up Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 3 that came out earlier in this year in 2024, started in February and ended in May. And I got to thank Carrie because this wouldn't have happened. This, this wasn't going to happen. It wasn't for Carrie. I remember I had no interest in Bad Batch and you sold me on that first season. And then here we are. Years I later, that. I'm actually trying to see when we first did the because I did not pull this up beforehand. Like, a, oh, February, oh, February 7th, 2023. So, just last year, we did the first season. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not that long. No, so we, I think I we waited longer. Yeah, I did too. I and mean, then we did the second one in June 1st. So, the second one, the second season must have already been out when we finally <laughs> yeah, did the first one. God, how long have we been friends, Mike? <laughs> I don't even remember a how we, we met on Twitter, right? I, I think we met on Twitter probably. Maybe through Facebook. No, it was Twitter. Oh. It was Twitter. Okay. But I had asked for guests for Bad Batch season one, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think that's how we met. Or something. I think I, I, think I started I think that's how I met. podcast first. Yeah, because Jody, you met me through Bill, who gave me looks at 40. That's right. It was through Bill. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I forgot. That's how me and him meet a lot of people together. We work together <laughs> a lot in that sense, in the same circles. But. We are here to wrap with the Bad Batch season three. One thing that, so this ran 15 episodes. This was the shorter of the three seasons by one episode. And this is the end of anything Clone Wars. Like, we're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And perfect. Good. You know, I'm okay with that. I'm read much. I am ready for it to, because anything animated we get now is, I mean, unless you get like the Tales, the Tales stuff we'll probably get. But like, we're going to be, whatever the next show is going to be, is going to be during the early Empire. Whenever, whenever. Whatever animated show they do next, nothing's nothing's planned as far as I as I am aware. I'm gonna say they could do it whenever they want to, right? I mean, they don't have to stick to that. No, they can do whatever they want. I'm just assuming if they wanted to continue the timeline, next would be something. With oh them. yeah, no, I, I bet they do something old Republic coincide with the Acolyte. If oh, that, yeah, probably is, if like High like Republic even. even. That would be nice. Or High Republic, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I mean, I look forward to seeing the next animated show in this style again because. They got the style down. This show looked good. It did. Yeah. So I've been I, I've been so much happier with this show on an animation than I was the main Clone Wars run. Cause like they they toned down some of the more abstract facial shapes and it just gives everything an air of seriousness that really helps you take the shapes at face value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It help. I, I was like, gonna I, say actually. Oh go ahead, please. I was going to say, actually, they didn't use many aliens, but you know what? Now thinking about it, they actually did, <laughs> but uh, yeah. they did tone it down. It didn't seem as much. Like yeah, I, I really feel like the initial Clone Wars designs were much more childish, like more child oriented in a way. They were softer. They have rounder shapes. And now with characters like Hemlock, we're getting these like starker character actor looking faces. And it really benefits the shapes of the show. Yeah. I think Clone Wars was, well, at least when it started, more aimed at kids than this one. This one seemed like it was aimed at the fans of the Clone Wars, that it was age group. For sure. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of, I don't know. I think sometimes this show, in the first season especially, feels like it's really aimed at little kids. Uh, especially, I think the animation, the the art style has kind of like a Playmobil look to it a little bit. It reminds me of the Play, or play School. It reminds me of the Play School Star Wars figurines, if you've ever seen any of those. Yeah, but, I, know, I think I know what you're talking about. It, as the show's gone on, the subject matter has gotten darker, and it's it, the acting, like the uh, the writing, has gotten more serious and, and a little less like silly. There's less like silly, like there were. I don't think there were really like, any what you call like silly episodes in this season, and there were some silly episodes in the first two seasons. <laughs> yeah, no, like, yeah, the, like the Pod Racer episode in the second season, and so on. There's some just like okay, well, this is for kids. And this season, I mean, I still argue this is for kids. I mean, it's it might yeah. be for, for bigger kids, but it's still very much for kids, which is fine. You can enjoy a thing that's for kids. Um, I think it was made that, yeah, there's nothing there that would deter a kid from watching it. Like, this wasn't made too, too adult that you wouldn't want your kid watching or anything. Yeah, like, I've been trying to sell a friend on it, and he's just like, oh, I can't stand that kid power 
stuff. Oh, it's because of not Omega right. being front and center. And I'm like, I mean, there's some of that. Def- there's definitely some of that, but I think it's gotten better over the seasons. Definitely less than this one. Yeah, definitely less. Though there is some of that with the kids and the institute and and all that. It's a little Goonies at, at times, but <laughs> that's, that's fine. But it's it's. I thought this season was very very dark. It got dark at the yeah. end, especially. I mean, I think it got dark well, just like because in the beginning you start off with where the end the second and second one ended where Omega has been captured and she's in that prison camp. They did a no nice way. job with that episode, making it like almost seem hopeless. You know, and I really do like how very much in the beginning they are like, you're safer here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure, you are safer here than outside in the jungle with things that want to eat you. Yes, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they found an amazing balance and tone for this season. Because if you really like break down about what's happening with Omega and all these other kids, it's. It's so depressing and sad, you know, like I imagine like real little kids would probably be like kind of upset about a few of the things that happen. <laughs> yeah, de- definitely. Like, that's what I'm saying. This is this this one. This one is not for little kids. No. Yeah. I mean, you have um, the kid that gets it, there's an episode with Cad Bane in this one, right? Where he takes the kid. There's one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I rewatched. I, I watched it as it came out and then I rewatched half of it and then just didn't get around to finishing it. Yeah, I um I watched about half of it uh, a few weeks ago, and then I watched the other half of it in the last couple of days. That that was the right way to do it. It was I was having a hard time rewatching it. Just I don't know. I just couldn't do it. I I just don't have like a lot of time where I'm just like sitting and watching shows. So I had to I, make myself kind of sit down and do it. All my I, rewatching I, yeah, I this one off. I only watched <laughs> it this week, first time. Nice. Oh <laughs> really? Yeah, I just watched it once. Also, yeah. I couldn't wait. I had to watch it as it was coming out because of just people kept spoiling stuff. And I just got I got into it through like seeing what was upcoming. I didn't want to be spoiled. So I just started watching it. Or who's spoiling yeah. stuff? The Internet. Oh, I'm- <laughs> just the Internet in general. Just like I will just be recommended things or I'll see somebody at times. Like I knew like, well, one thing that I means in the trailer, but Asajj Ventures was in the trailer that she's in this season for one. Episode, oh, yeah. Oh, which- she, she caught me by surprise. I hadn't seen anything. Yeah, okay, yeah, I don't watch trailers, and I'm not on social media anymore, so I, I didn't know anything. That's good. You did it right then. It helps. I, I did not, but I still enjoyed what I saw. Like I, I, I mean, I just ended up watching it each day. I mean, each each day it came out, or within a day or two it came out, and I just because I was also just excited for it too. I was just enjoying it. I mean, this this season kept me involved because every episode, like the stakes are pretty high for the most part. There's not a lot of stuff yeah. where because you have you have her captured and then eventually Omega Omega this this is the very short version Omega breaks free and then they attack the island and then Omega gets captured again like it doesn't it has a lot of dark shit in this in this season in this season and there yeah. was less filler episodes there was a couple monster of the week episodes but there was less of them than there was yeah. in the previous ones yeah I don't really feel like it's that dark I mean I think a lot of you know kids cartoons have oh, you know yeah. these kind of things. Until really the last episode, and then they actually show people die, which they basically yeah. have not done the whole series, with, except for Tech, who dies off screen. But we actually see, like, you know, and not named characters, but we see stormtroopers get, like, like a sword through the chest. And, and or, or, I mean, just, yeah, characters get, like, actually, like, killed, killed in this, which is not something that normally happens in kids' cartoons or even in this show. That was an amazing bit of dopamine that fell through my head when that happened. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, what <Yeah>. the hell? <laughs> I was also surprised by a lot of things in this show. Like, I was surprised that this show makes, I mean, thanks to, God, what the hell is it? Dave Fioni, like, he's making <laughs> Force Awakens make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or no, not for the Last Jedi. Oh yeah, Last Jedi. Or not yeah, Last Jedi. He's, yeah. he's, it, he's doing Skywalker. the same thing Clone Wars did for the prequels, right? Clone yeah. Wars came yep. in and tried to make the prequels not stupid, and it then did. Bad Batch, Bad Batch is doing that for. Well, you can't do that for the Last Jedi. It's not possible, but it, it's trying. You Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, Rise of Skywalker. The, they, was the Last Jedi, the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Well, they literally said like he that is a clone body of. Palpatine. That that's confirmed. Yeah, now. but well, also well, there's a line in that movie. Somehow Palpatine returned. Well, now here's the yeah. somehow. It was it was Tantus space. <sighs> I mean, it, there's a lot of things in this like that show like the, them that he's trying to do this early on. One thing that I'm still curious about 
is in the end of there's two things happened in the end of season two that caught me off guard that I'm still like one. I was I really I know we talked about it. We thought Tech was going to show up again. Yeah, Tech I was, was sure dead, Tech dead. wasn't actually dead, but yeah, no, they left him dead. Right till the last episode, I thought one of those CX troopers was going to turn out to be oh. Tech. Yeah, same. I was, I was just waiting for it, and it just, and then when they killed him and it didn't happen, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Tech's just dead, dead. He's dead. Yeah. I gotta tell you, it's a it's a very satisfying thing to know that someone in a fictional universe I enjoy died, and they're not coming back. I don't have to worry about them ever coming back and having a whole episode dedicated to it. It was so satisfying when I realized that character yeah. ain't coming back. That character's no. dead. To My 15 other... years from now, Star Wars Episode 12, the opening crawl, somehow Tech has returned. Uh. <laughs> the one thing that, that, kind, the other thing that threw me for a loop is we know that that one clone, Emery, is a clone of Omega, or who it, no, it's a clone of whoever <laughs> Omega is. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. And I had thought, when we saw that episode last time, I thought she was the original body and that Omega was a clone of her. No, they said she was a clone from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. She they just did say that, she was that, Yeah, and I didn't know that they were necessarily the same. Did it say they were the same? They just she made a comment about her it sister. at some point. Yeah, sister, but the same way that Omega is their, the Bad Batches, they're her brothers. I didn't think that meant that they were twin sisters. So there, I, I mean, I figured that basically the Kaminoans are doing all these different clone experiments, and they didn't do the rapid aging to Omega, but they did to Emery. Yeah, that's all I took. But but I didn't think that that meant that Emery and Omega were like the same genetic. Oh, that's what I for some reason thought, just because she said sister. But maybe it's just well, well, because they don't have the Emery. same hair color. They don't have the same hair color Good or point. eye color. So that's true. Okay, never mind then. Until, uh, until we had Emery though show up last time, I actually thought that Omega was a clone of um, Django Fett, just feminized. Same. <laughs> but then when I Emery shows too. up, like, oh, there's. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess, but she's you know, Django Fett is uh, he's Kiwi with dark hair, and she's I mean, she is Kiwi. Oh, no. She she has a Kiwi voice actress, but she's very white. Oh, she's and a blonde, blonde hair. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's okay. why I, I don't know. Think I guess so. it's just. My mind just did, didn't think of them as cloning other people until then we're like, oh, there are others. There's just one person over there just like, all right, bring them back in for another, another round. Yeah. It actually makes sense. It just <laughs> never occurred to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. I, I mean, I thought the same thing, to be honest with you, until this moment. So Yeah, the, in my mind, the thing was is that they 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 have the, the, clo- the clone troopers are cloned from Jango Fett because they're trying to make ultimate soldiers. And Omega and Emery were cloned to be scientists, and so yeah, they the, would be clones of somebody like Sciency. Okay, that would make likely, sense. Would yeah, be my thought. Sense. I feel so bad for Emery. She just doesn't have a thought in her head, just all day long collecting <laughs> vials of blood. Like, God, what kind of like, life? What do they think? They're like, do they think eventually the blood is just going to work out? Because all they're they're not <laughs> they're, they're, like they're not doing any experiments to Omega or anybody. They're just testing your blood every day. I think. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. So, so they're, they're looking for midichlorians, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. That's, and that's, that's what it is. And they, they need to find basically, can we create a clone that has a high enough M count to be the emperor? Well, or, oh, maybe what they're doing with the blood is that they're cloning the blood that she puts in there and seeing when they clone it real quick. If it keeps, oh, that's probably what they're doing because you see, like, you see keep something the happen with this. They're trying to see if it keeps it. But there's something. I, uh, so I didn't get this from watching the show, but from reading stuff on the show, there's something about they're supposed to be doing some mixes with the blood, and I think that's what we're not seeing that it's being mixed into the blood to hold the M count, but it only works with Omega's blood as they're going through. Oh, okay, that that makes sense. Oh. I don't know what they never exactly they never say what's special about her. I do like that they never actually say the stupid word midi- midichlorians. They just say oh, M count. Yes. Apparently, George Lucas M-Count. is pissed off about that. Yeah. Why M count? I mean, it makes sense that they abbreviate it, and also makes sense that they don't share it with people that are are unimportant to them. And I did like well, the uh, Ventress brought it up that she said it's not medic- M count alone that does it it's also training like it just gives you potential right. basically so th- she t- i think that was trying to balance out the why is it not important later okay I, that word got, word so much Michlorian. <laughs> we gotta talk just a little bit about that asajj ventures fight with all the bad that, that ruled right <laughs> yeah it did, was, yeah. yeah oh yeah <laughs> she kicked their ass <laughs> <laughs> and didn't kill them she yeah. couldn't yeah. 
Well, and now for the her, first her time, is yellow. I like that. She's yeah. back in the canon. Yeah. Where she was dead and gone for because uh, in in Clone Wars she doesn't die, but she was supposed to die in an arc of Clone Wars that never got released. So then right. she died in a book that was canon. So either now the book isn't canon, or, or she didn't I don't really die. Yeah. I think some of those books they wrote as canon. They're saying they're redoing that again. Like they're I'm taking some of them out. Or oh. others. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so she's, I mean, and essentially that book was just written based on a, on a story arc that they just never got around to. That was supposed to be part so, of the Clone Wars ending when the last season, they just didn't get around to it. That's why it became a book instead. So is she still gone? Because she's balanced to the light now. Is it still because of getting together with that Jedi? I can't remember his name now. Uh, they don't say Quinlan anything Boss. about him. Quinlan Boss, yeah. I'm assuming that, that that's why, books, but right? that was in, that's in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he hasn't, he, he wasn't mentioned... In this at all? No. I mean, she's in two episodes, I think. Too. I think they see her on the island. I think they see her somewhere else too, because they're trying yeah. to figure out about the M count. Yeah, because they see her on the island, and then after Omega gets captured again, then they go to her to help them track down the M count stuff, so they can try. Yeah. They're trying to figure out yeah. that one. Find... Quick, like sort of a quick flash to a bunch of people in that one. Yeah, because even Sid showed up at one point, but not for them seeing him. The other before they got it, didn't she? So I'm I'm looking at Wikipedia. Um, and, it, and it has not been explained how she's alive. Okay. Basically, she died and was buried on Dathomir by Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh. Quinlan Voss and Obi-Wan Kenobi took her body to Dathomir several months after she died and laid her to rest alongside her sisters. Huh. Well, she was just sleeping then. That explains it. <laughs> and then, that's and then it just up. says, after her apparent death and the end of the Clone Wars, Ventress continued her travels covertly on a personal starship with a new yellow lightsaber. In other words, we okay. don't know yet because they haven't written. So somehow, <laughs> they haven't read it yet. Petrus has returned. Eh, I mean, I'm Chloe sure it will be elaborated magic. on eventually. Maybe, so. maybe there will be a. You know, it, it'll, they'll reveal it in a fortnight. Hmm, I hate that. You you could be right. You know, I'm I'm usually never lucky enough to wake up with a yellow lightsaber. It's always a blue lightsaber or a green <laughs> lightsaber or even a black lightsaber. Sometimes I don't know how those get in there. I I like that hers is yellow because she's not a Jedi. She's not a Sith anymore, so she has a yellow <laughs> lightsaber. That's fine. Yeah, or is the is the canon now that your light and dark sidedness affects the the color of your lightsaber, or, or is that not canon? I think they're I think they're back and forth on it because yeah, um, I think they go Ray back and forth get on the it yellow lightsaber too. Right, yeah. and then and then uh, Ahsoka has the white ones in the TV series. She has the white ones because she's purifying red. The red ones that she stole. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah she took them from, from the Inquisitors she, she murdered. One of the Inquisitors that she murdered, or the one that she did mur- kill, is in Tales of the Jedi, Season 1. Okay. I think. I haven't hey, watched cool. Tales. You Same. can later if you want to for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I think it's from there. That, that's oh, yeah, well, any, anyway, so Project Necromancer yeah. is definitely the, you know, Palpatine plan to clone himself and make lots of little, like, Snokes and jars and so on. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so, yeah, no, that's it. That's it. I, I, I just want to ask, why is Zillow uh, Beasts have to do with Project ne- Necromancer? Because Zillow oh, Beast, he oh, wanted oh. to clone them for the armor. That's the whole idea is that the, the shells could block lightsabers. So he wanted oh. to make more of that's that armor. Why. So he but, was oh. to try and amalgamate that into the clones. It just never worked. Yeah, yeah. I figured that science facility had multiple projects and that the Zillow Beast was for something else, but. No, I wondered if it was a really weapon of mass destruction that he was developing, like clone Zilla Beast and just throw him on a planet and there. I mean, yeah, yeah that's possibly. <laughs> I mean, they, they would, it would work. <laughs> you just drop in one spot and go, bye, guys, have fun. Well, it almost destroyed a Coruscant. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, maybe we should just consider that everybody needs a pet, you know, they can, like, cuddle <laughs> up with, have a, what you if, know, like, get close to. Yeah. What if Palpatine was hoping that instead of being, like, a uh, his clone body being a decrepit old man attached to a chair that instead he could be like a Zillow beast <laughs> <laughs> with the force. Uh, right. Skywalker yeah. would have went a lot different. Then. That would have been a different movie. Yeah. That would have been. I just, I think it's great. in right. I just want to point out again, it rises Skywalker just how fucking, I mean, it's just the fucking most terrible movie ever, but the idea <laughs> of like his big master plan is to clone bodies of himself that are old and pieces of shit. Like his first body. 
<laughs> like he couldn't clone a young version of himself. Well, I don't think that was the plan. I just think it never. <laughs> he just has really shitty scientists. Well, I mean, as you well, see in this, is eventually we're going to jump around, but that's fine. Like the way this ends is after Hemlock and everybody is killed, Tarkin just takes over and says, "Fuck this project. We'll go on to something else." Which project is Star Wars, which is the Death Star. Yeah, which so. fits Tarkin. Tarkin doesn't like you. I mean, I think you see it in last oh, season. Yeah. Where he's like, fuck you, Hemlock, I don't agree with what... Because he also doesn't know what he's doing, because Palpatine is keeping it very keeping close it to the yeah. chest. That, and uh, Tarkin always has been focused more on... Less on the force of it. He didn't trust the force. Because he yeah. didn't think it was good enough to keep power over the whole galaxy. Yeah, Tarkin's old school, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Tarkin is right in the case where a Death Star is going to make more sense to keeping peace. Because you have a weapon of, of mass destruction at your disposal, so then you're able to input the fear into people versus... This was just a project for Palpatine just to keep himself around. Right. Yeah. Because that's all he actually cares about. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit about anyone else. He cares about himself. One of the characters in this, oh, I can't remember which one, actually turns out to be, what well, I'm blanking on names now, the father of the uh, other guy in the First Order. Oh, are you talking about Hux? Hux. Yeah. Uh, his father showed up in one of these episodes. Oh, yeah. I v- vaguely I remember it. Just, he just oh, barely. Really? Yeah, I think it might have been the last, the end of last season. The Shadow Council. One of the members is actually Hux's father. Yeah, he was also in yes. the Mando, uh, Mando season three. I think I gotta finish season because Mando season three. They also talk about Project Necromancer. This shows you the origins of it, and then that shows yeah. you where Moff Gideon is working on it all those years later. Yeah, because they're trying to bring back their leader. Except I don't know how the hell they had data still. I guess, but I, I, I my assumption is the Project Necromancer thing never really stopped. It's just that after just this happens, yeah, yeah, because I mean, again, like you, they do a good job of having you see that all the data is erased. Everything is destroyed. The plant is destroyed. All the people that were in the know are killed. But again, it's, you know, somebody's going to take it over at some point because Palpatine yeah. still cares about himself. Have you have you guys considered that maybe a Palpatine clone would have Benjamin Button syndrome? You know, maybe it starts out <laughs> old and, and then it gets younger right before it does. There you go. Uh, I mean, they haven't perfected it yet. They're still working out the kinks. But I mean, at least they're at least the canon is trying to make it make more sense. Yeah, it's trying. I mean, one thing this this season did too that I don't know how I feel about is Crosshair rejoins the team. And one part oh, it was nice that. having him back because we haven't had him part of the team since like first episode of the first season. Like he he leaves pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. No, I loved having him back and his like his whole arc. And of him, like, not trusting himself anymore, like, feeling like he can't shoot anymore. And then it depends at the at the very end. It Everything depends on him being very accurate. And he does it. And I like, I thought it was fairly accurate. Like, it took a full episode for Hunter to get back to trusting him. Yeah. But then it took another episode for Echo to get back to trusting him. Mm-hmm. So, like, they didn't just automatically, oh, he's back now, it's good. Oh, and, and did, I miss, nice did I miss Crosshair losing his hand? It's in the last episode. It's in the last yeah, episode, okay. Because I it saw at like the very way. end... They showed him whenever they get together and take like a, a group picture at the end. Basically, he has he's missing his hand. I was like, wait, when did he lose his hand? Yeah, It's in the very last episode when they're fighting the, the new clones that Hemlock was working uh, on. The, yeah, the the operators. Or they cut off his hand. The one with the I swords. thought that they do. OK, I think I can picture that scene. Now. No, they pin him on it. the ground, hold down, step on his arm and then cut off his hand. Yeah, like it's, it's a little brutal. Yeah, uh, you know, cup half full. Oh yeah, he CX2. gets a new robot hand. Yeah, CX two he... cuts off his hand. Yeah, because doesn't he t- have with to make a really maybe. good shot with his other hand after that? Yes. Yeah, I remember still seeing that good part, shot. But then I was wondering why he was using his wrong hand because I must have missed it. <laughs> it it's hand. very quick. It, it's because it's the last shot that he makes is when Hemlock grabs Omega because Hemlock is a coward and and Omega is smart enough to push him aside and then he's able to she, make a shot. She to stabs break. him in the thigh. Oh yeah, that's what she With does. The scalpel. She pulls, yeah, she has like a scalpel in her uh, upper sleeve and she stabs him in the thigh and then jerks, he like, j- they kind of jerk apart so that their arms are up in the air with the handcuffs and Crosshair shoots the handcuffs. Because she's a badass in this. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, my friend being like, oh, I hate the kid power stuff. I'm like, I mean, she's like 14, she's it, we've gotten out of the kid power stuff by this season, I feel like. I, the first I feel- season, yes, it is a little silly with her. With her, She can't have a gun because it's a cartoon for kids. So instead, she has a gun that's a bow. It's like a gun, but well, worse. At least it's a crossbow this time. Yes. I, but I she's like not even using better. that by the, the, the she, she last She gets it episode. given to her, but I never see her use it. No, exactly. She's not using it at all. And so 
and she needed to not because it's dumb. It's just dumb. It's I'm sorry. It's it's about as dumb as that. Oh God! Is it um Rebels where the kid has a fucking slingshot in the first season? Yes. Oh, so stupid. It goes away. But, but it's because it's for little little kids. It's like Rebels and this were both at first clearly aimed at babies, and then right away both of those shows got way more mature and better. Rebels and I think the first season of this is good. It's just like the first it, it first the first season it felt like they didn't know what they were gonna do, what they wanted to be with it. But this I, season is very clearly aimed at an older audience. And, I was sort of hoping that she yeah. would end up using the crossbow, though that it would turn out to be like a bowcaster. Yeah, that, the, like that's close, the, that, 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 that wouldn't have it would have justified it then to me. <laughs> We've seen how powerful they are, those are. Well, bowcasters yeah. are. That's the thing. That's why it would that would justify it to me. But uh, did she use it at all in that episode? I know it was given to her. I'm, I, I don't, think don't so. remember. I don't remember ever getting used. I mean, at one point she's carrying just a, a standard uh, stormtrooper blaster rifle yep. in this episode. She doesn't shoot it, but she's carrying it. But she carries it for a while. But she stabs a guy. So that's 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 pretty <laughs> adult. Yeah. They they did a good job with her. Like I remember, I went from season one where I could give a shit about her to where I really appreciate her as a character. Oh, yeah. At the no, end of I mean, the she's series. she's my favorite character in the show. Honestly, same. She's I feel like she's kind of the heart of the show because she yeah. she's like very like idealistic and loyal. Yeah, and she makes a good point in the second season that she's the same age as them. <laughs> that is true. Like they treat her like a little kid, but they're they're children. They just were grown faster. Yeah, but they're, that doesn't make them, like, mentally more mature than her or something. No, they were just trained on the battlefield, so sure, with combat, yeah. but that's it. But they make immature decisions, like, yeah. as you would as, a, like, four-year-old. Or, <laughs> well, how long or, has it been since the Clone Wars? I mean, everything? at this point, it's been a... it's it, This is, uh like, 18 ABY, I think, is this season. So that's... Because uh, the Clone Wars had started before the Clone Wars start, because yeah. John Dooku had already put it in motion. But yeah. we don't. But they weren't the the first batch of clones. They were like the, the clone nine ninety nine. They were like the second. Oh yeah, they were they, later. They made a fuck ton of clones though. Uh, so according to Wikipedia, this entire series takes place over one year, which I, I doesn't seem oh. pro- it doesn't seem possible. I mean, but it's, it's, Wikipedia yeah, says always, season one like, is with no, uh, movement through space. Like it happens super fast. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. I mean, it, I thought it was longer for sure, cause especially because Omega grows up a lot. She looks a, much more adult, even. As he yeah, I thought it was a couple of years, but I guess they wanted to be where the Empire is getting his shit together that quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, this is like, this in this season, at this point, you don't really run into clone troopers for the most part, other than Hemlock has clone troopers. Right. The rest of the yeah, world does not. Because Hemlock still believes in cloning. And the rest of the the empire doesn't believe in that anymore. But I don't get why so many. Uh, the one thing bothers me: all the clone commandos we see all seem to support him. I'm like, why are all of them? Because None they them. aren't defective. Like the reason the Bad Batch are not loyal to the empire is because they're defective and they don't. Their microchips don't work. Their yeah, behavior but like, chips even don't some work. of the other troopers that aren't defective eventually get over their chips, or like enough that they start questioning. Because they meet that one, the one trooper in this one that fights them, General Wolf. He later has his chip. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I think that maybe eventually, you know, they can overcome it. Like, just uh, because they're really good clones, it takes longer. Like, really well made yeah. clones. Right. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think that's a big part. I mean, to be fair, Wolf is also the one that screws them over, screws them over in Rebels when he calls the Empire and says, hey, we got the guys you're looking for right here. Oh, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he's, it's, I, that, I gotta finish Rebels. It's in an early episode, but yeah, you, you should. I, I've only watched like the first couple episodes. I gotta watch more. Of Wait, so Wolf betrays them? Yes, he calls the Empire and says that they're there, and then they fight the Empire together, and then Wolf's like, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I thought oh, they'd let okay. us go back. Something dumb like that. Oh, but that's, okay, I see. It's And then I think he shows up again in Rebels later on, but yeah, he betrays them at one point. I see. That was nice of him. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, it kind of fits that he was also still involved with the Empire at the at, in this. Yeah. So, and I get it. Like, okay. I mean, they don't really want to leave, but they're also they get betrayed by the Empire too. So I think that that plays a big part in why they all leave eventually, because the Empire don't give a shit about them, even though the Empire is stupid and should just use the clones that you already have because you have a soldier force <laughs> already designed, trained, and I, paid for. Like, I went through season two. Like, I got through almost all that. I had to cut my season three watch rewatch short by a couple episodes but the episode where crosshair ends up going 
to a outpost that's nothing but new trooper outfits for the replacements that will be taking over for the clones <laughs> is so yeah. effective and sad yeah. and like yeah. a brilliant a brilliant piece of just military like work <laughs> Yeah. And they do a throwback to that when they could they go back to that base in this yeah. in the season to use the computers. Yeah, and, it's excellent. And you see the uh tremor basically. Mm-hmm. The, you ice see the old tremor. helmets from the guys that died. Hey, they stole it from Dune. We can have a tremor <laughs> that is true. going around. Hey, you know? I, I love the movies tremors. I'm not complaining that it's there. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I love the first one. I'm not fucking with those sequels. That's true. They're much more B movies, but yeah, no, the first one's amazing. <laughs> but there's <laughs> Yeah, I actually, one other thing I like they did here is with uh, Omega. They could have made her four cents, and they leaned towards it, but I like that they backed off of it. Yeah, I was really annoyed at first that it seemed to be going in that direction. <laughs> I was expecting it to happen. I've been expecting it since the start, and then when they didn't go through it, I thought I was going to be disappointed, but I'm like, no, you know what? They did have told a better story this way than they would have if they had just made her a Jedi now. Yeah, definitely, definitely glad they didn't go that way. Same. I like that. Like when, even when you have Asajj trying to teach her, like she doesn't really learn. You know, she's not going to be a Jedi, and I'm I'm completely okay with that. We don't need. We have enough of that. Don't need every hero in the universe has to be a Jedi. Yes, Jedi's yeah. are not interesting most of the time. They sit around meditating all the goddamn time. <laughs> like I'm sorry, what's so interesting about them that they're in a cult? It's not my. <laughs> that's not, that doesn't level out to good storytelling that's why these all have to be in the middle of wars yeah yeah not wrong unfortunately (laughs) i do like that they added batcher to the team the little animal that she (laughs) rescues i like him yeah he's there at the very end too he's like old he's got some wrinkles on his face and yet they still kept their droid pet yep gonk was still there too was there gonk's a part of the crew yep (laughs) sentient he is sentient even if he was used as a weight back before yeah, <laughs> and you do get a lot more with Rex too in this show, which is nice. Where you see what Rex is doing with the clones and trying, like that base that they're at is a base I am ninety nine percent sure was in Clone Wars in an episode that they end up taking over that they that they use that then gets attacked by all the stormtroopers and stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure that was a been. Clone Wars episode. Huh. I think it's the, I think it's the base that gets attacked by that's like on a it's like some little I feel like it's a reference to something like I feel like it's a Clone Wars reference episode but i i'm not 100 percent sure but i like seeing with rex i like that we get more with rex than we get it that that one senator the blue lady i can't remember her name in her planet oh i was gonna say chani but that's dune <laughs> <laughs> but i like how she's trying yeah. to take the clones to her planet so they can retire and they can have a life yeah. and she's trying and i i like seeing that because that helps like say oh why are all the clones gone and this is because some of them that weren't murdered went here while they're like it gives you at least something to put to put it away like i like that and i like seeing that with rex and i like that you see rex doing more because when you you only see you see rex and rebels a little bit early on where he's just out in the desert hunting giant worm so with wolf and somebody else so that's nice to get more with more of the clones and all this stuff like that i I really appreciated that they didn't not many clones got out of that tan of space or no most are dead yeah like in that final battle, it surprised me. Like you said before, like we saw people die, but not just stormtroopers. Like a lot on the good side died, mm-hmm. which we haven't seen much of that since like Clone Wars when it was the actual war. Yeah, because these are characters. Yeah. You have so many characters, so you can make them expendable. Yeah, which I mean, it makes sense because you also need to put away a lot of these characters now that you're done. So you need to get rid of them. This is a great way to just kill them all <laughs> off in a big battle. True. I mean, you do like you can't just keep them around, so. I'm okay well, with even it. with um, even with like a uh, Rex, not Rex, Hunter and them, like showing du- where are they during the uh, Galactic Civil, Civil War? War. Well, they've re- they, they're, they're they, retired. They've retired. They're old. Like yeah, they they're done. They're fighting. Like because we see the odd one. Then pe- like uh, there's uh, people are saying now in Return of the Jedi that was Rex, right? It's been retconned to be Rex. I'm you pretty sure. Like officially, it's fine that Rex, you have yeah. one of them. Like Rex, I can see pushing himself to do it. But a lot of them are old and not going to keep fighting. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them are killed off or just, you know, because you, you made you made them to be expendable. Like, they weren't concerned what's going on with them. <laughs> they were even they, to be, not care about If they If they retire, what are they going to do? They're just going to sit around watching bad TV. Like, <laughs> they don't have anything to do, God damn it. You didn't educate them on a new level besides how to be a soldier. Like, no, they were just meant to be that. That's it. soldiers. <laughs> yeah. That's why they didn't know. have a retirement plan, because that wasn't that in one of the episodes of the... Yeah. Uh, 
And that's what it, Senator Tucci... Is it Tucci? Tucci, that sounds right. That sounds right. I, cause she talks about it in the, to the Senate, but she even says in this season, like, you're like, yeah, the Senate's not... I think they're already starting to realize that, yeah, you're, you don't have much power. <laughs> but you don't give a shit. Yeah, even without the Death Star, they were very limited. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that's how you run a dictatorship. <laughs> you yep. you don't let people have a voice for too long. Rio Chuchi. I found it. Okay. I mean, and Palpatine is a smart dictator, okay? Like, <laughs> he's oh, not yeah. good, but he's smart for the most part. It was nice having Echo back on the team, too, because Echo comes back pretty pretty quickly. So I like seeing everybody together other than Tech, which I'm still, I'm, I am I was expecting Tech to show up, too, like, like we talked about before, but I'm, I'm glad that he stayed dead, too. Actually, I liked Echo. Like, he really showed himself like his whole infiltration yes. dressed up as this, like that was a really good yeah and if well, you notice in the epilogue so we know echo lives to the end but in the epilogue uh he's apparently not with them anymore no it oh. seems like he went off with rex and them yeah so he went off with rex and them and and i thought he was just going off just like temporarily but in the epilogue when omega is an adult and she's leaving she tells hunter to look after crosshair wrecker and badger yeah badger yeah doesn't mention Echo. So Echo must have stayed away or gone away. Yeah. Because he went with that pirate lady, too. She went, too, at the end. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Fee. That makes sense that, like, you know, Rex and them went on. Plus, Echo wasn't really... I mean, he joined the Bad Batch because he was experimented on in Rescue, but he's still not... He's, you know, he's a reg. He was a reg. Yeah. And he yeah. feels more connected with the troopers. He did that right from the start. Yeah. To the regular troopers. He, the Bad Batch were always outcasts anyway. Because Echo was a regular trooper until he gets captured yep. in one of the episodes where you see him, where you you see him like you think he's dead, but he you know he died off screen. But then they're like, nope, he's not dead. Because yeah, he was the oh, what was that group? They they were not the bad batch, but they were lousy troopers. <laughs> yes, I like I, like I, I know you're talking about. Part. I can't remember, <laughs> but yeah, they weren't. They were having issues, and they were going to be de- rated as defected and do what Clone Ninety Nine did and just haul stuff around at the base, communal base. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I also appreciate that Admiral Rampart is in the season and he gets his he gets what he deserves. <laughs> he gets and, his comeuppance. Yeah, because in the last season he blows up Camino and was it in this sh- was it last season or this season when he gets a, a I think it was last season he got arrested. I thought it was this season that he got arrested. Season. I, I uh, can't, he got know arrested. Where we are. It was last season. Yeah. Yeah, he got arrested last season when they did the whole crap. I can't something about Camino, but. Like, yeah, because yeah, he blows up fucking Camino and he gets he gets blamed for that even though he had approval to do it. Right. They, yeah, they the blame Palpatine. him when it gets when it gets known publicly. They blame him. Yeah, well, Palpatine being Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was stupid to trust the Emperor. Like, he, <laughs> like that's that's all on him. Like, he should have known that would have happened. Like, well, how stupid do you have to be to trust? Him? Hey, maybe the Emperor right. came to him and said, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to make you a great commander again. We just got to listen to me. Trust me. I'm the best. I know everything. I got big hands." Maybe he did that, you know. So far. Well, yeah. It, come on, and this time he thought he was going to blackmail his way back in. Even if that works, you're not lasting very long in the Empire. You're going to disappear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going right? to be gone really quick. Yeah. He's stupid. I mean, that he was a bad. Like, and he betrays them. Like, they they rescue him from the prison camp. And he's like, well, I'm just going to betray them. Like, he was just a, I, I'm glad that he gets blown up by the the cameo in, in the I very end. She's like, mercy. you're not leaving. <laughs> Boom. That was good. He he got what he deserved. I, I did like seeing them rescue him from a camp, and it really reminded me of Rogue One. So that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I really would like to point out the voice actor behind Hemlock, Jimmy Simpson. I thought. This was Stephen Ogg, who does the voice of a shadowy figure slash a Professor Venomous on OKKO. But it's actually a very established actor who has been part of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's one of the Poil siblings, if you remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at his whole filmography right now. He's also been in How I Met Your Mother, Party Down, uh, Psych. <laughs> God. This guy has a murderer's row of rules. Well, turns out there's a Newfoundlander in this show. Jennifer Hale voiced Senator Chuchi. Oh. oh. And cool. she's from Labrador. Man, I didn't even realize that. Wow. Yeah, didn't realize it either. Uh, but she does so idea. many voices. Yeah, she's she really good voice actors. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that made me happy in here. Like, I'm happy that the Bad Batch is essentially, you know, the show's wrapped up, but also the characters are put away. Like... They explain that, yep, they did their thing. They really just cared about rescuing Omega. And eventually they're just like, we're just going to stay on this island, live with these people, and we are done fighting. And I like that because it puts the characters away so you don't have to wonder, where were they during the Galactic? Like, you know, they're old and 
sitting on a beach. God, I was, we're, actually, we're going to see something with Omega, though, going on during the Galactic Civil War. Yeah. And I, I know some really... people complain that, like, how can you have, like, but again, the galaxy's a fucking huge place. You can have other it characters is. that were around, just not involved with Luke. Like, the Rebellion was a bigger group. Like, they got knocked down to really small at that time. But before Luke got involved, they were a bigger group. They got almost wiped out several times. Rogue One, they get almost wiped out. Andor After, yeah, shows you the beginning in, in, of it. Like, I don't know if it, how much of it's still canon, but I remember after uh, Endor, before they end up on Hoth, the, I, the Dark Horse comic books showed they almost got wiped out then, too. That, the Dark Horse isn't canon, but there are, there is a whole but run there is of Star some Wars. Stuff that period, I think that still is. Isn't there? I think there's a there's whole Star Wars canon. run of Marvel that takes place from episode four to episode five that is canon, and that shows a lot of how much dire straits they are in during the yeah. time leading up to Empire Strikes Back. Which is a really, yeah. really good comic, by the way, like 70 issue run or something before it connect before it then goes from the end of Empire Strikes Back to Return of the Jedi. I haven't finished it, unfortunately, but it's a really good fucking run, by the way, if oh. you ever want to read I might it. I might check that one out. I read all the Dark Horse back in the day, but I don't really think they, but then they do they do borrow. I mean, they do bring back stories. I mean, hell, the fact that we resurrected, you know, Palpatine is bringing back the heir to the Empire stories. Just different yeah. way of doing it. Or not heir to the Empire, Dark Empire. Dark Empire story. Yeah. Which I also covered on this podcast, too. So maybe yeah. we could get Z- Zorba the Hutt still? <laughs> <laughs> I, just I love mean, I'm sure we'll get, as time goes on, we'll get more stories that were a version of them from the from the, yeah. from the the legends. They'll, they'll take somebody who is passionate about it, will take over and produce their own version of it that's now canon. Like, that's going to happen. Well, they brought back Thawne. I never yeah. thought we'd see him again. I yeah. didn't either. I actually, I have a Thrawn Funko Pop, unfortunately, on the ground because somebody with four paws knocked it down. But <laughs> the I, girlfriend? I it because I'm going to get it signed by Timothy Zahn no. this year. Oh, oh wow. yeah, nice. He comes to a convention near me every year. And I've seen him twice, but I never, I, I mean, I looked up the Air of the Empire comic book, but I'm like, I'm not spending 90 bucks in this comic book just to get it signed. But yeah. I have a Funko Pop. I will have it signed by him. And it's worth 90 bucks. I wish I still had mine. It might be worth more, to be honest with you, because it's the first appearance of a bunch of different characters. Yeah. Yeah, all my yeah. Star Wars stuff is gone, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we move on. Yeah. I mean, comics are just like that. Yeah. yeah, I like Star Wars, but I think I'm far past wanting like a whole bunch of Star Wars merch. Like maybe I'll get some comic books, but that'll probably be it, to be frank. My current thing is I like getting Funko Pops, and if I can get it signed by the actor, like I have a Boba Fett signed by the two actors from Empire and Return of the Jedi, and the stunt actor for the book of Boba Fett is going to be at a convention I'm going to later this year. I'm going to get him to sign the book of Boba Fett Funko Pop, and if I ever meet tomorrow Morrison, I'm get him to sign that too, and then I'll have those right next to each other. Nice. nice. But that, that's what kind of one of my things I like to do is just have Funko Pop signed. Cause, oh, no, and I was wrong. A graded copy of that, of the Aaron Empire number one, is four hundred and fifty dollars for best offer, and a non graded copy is seventy five bucks for best offer. So yeah, I was close. I was close. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's fucking ridiculous. And I I know that book was probably cheap as fuck not that long ago. So yeah, well, I bought it second hand e- for like I fifty e-book. cents. What's the ebook? What's the ebook worth? <laughs> I mean, the, the trade isn't isn't cheap either because I know Peter, friend of the show. He has the trade, thanks to half price books, and I know that one isn't cheap either in, anymore because they, you know, it's out of print and they never brought yeah. it back yet. I don't think so. I remember looking them up. I read them online, but yeah, they are not. They are not cheap. <laughs> back to Bad Batch. Bad Batch, yeah. That's what <laughs> we got. Did. Sorry, deferred it there. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy Asajj is back. I'm happy. Oh, and Fennec Shan is in one episode of this when they go to her yeah. trying to find out more about yep. the M count stuff. She was in two because she was they. She was another one that they called. Oh, wasn't she? Th- but I think it was just her voice the second time. I don't think we yeah. saw her. Yeah. I'm glad she's getting more more paid. More more paid. Yeah. Oh, I any, like her. anything for me now, Win. I'm happy to see her work. <laughs> yeah. I know you are. And she's fucking <clears throat> awesome. Ever since it, it, I saw her on the uh, Marvel show. I can't remember the name of that show. Agent uh, of Shield. Agents of Shield. Agent Shield. Ever since I saw yeah. her on that, she was like the best part came out of that. And I like that show. Oh yeah, she's definitely one of the best things on that. I mean, I I I've been in love with her since she was on ER. <laughs> so, My boyfriend uh, probably know. Well, she was in ER. Yeah, she's she's a very minor role in the first season, and then she comes back in like the fifth season and becomes one of the main characters on the oh, show. Cool. And she's one of the main characters for most of the rest of the series. But she's in the first season. She's in like five episodes. She's Carter's rival uh, intern, and then she, she disappears. <laughs> I have a I was, friend who went. Oh, uh, never mind. Don't worry about. It. <laughs> I was just happy to see more stuff with Fennec Shan because we're yeah. never going to get a book of Boba Fett season two. 
Yeah, so, it's probably for I the best. Know. No, it is for the best. We're never going to find out what happened to the Power Rangers, the the Moped Power Rangers. I'm, I'm not <laughs> No, no, we're not going to get a spinoff series no, of the Moped like, Power Rangers. So, hey, yeah. they wanted to. Had it not been critically panned, they would have done it, I bet. Critically and popularly panned because it was fucking terrible. Well, that was so fucking bad. And oh. uh, it, it, You had the one of the best characters, popular characters in, in Star Wars, and there's so many things you could have done, and they're just like, how can we fuck this up? Well, so. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I liked... I, I like parts of it, but there, I like yeah. parts of it also. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, I like, I like the, the, the really Moped Power Rangers is what I had a problem with. Was <laughs> yeah, I, I know they were <laughs> my favorite. Were the two episodes where both that wasn't even in the show. That's my <laughs> the favorite. Mandalorian episodes. I like. Yeah, I, mean, I like. That was also stupid. I like the like dances with wolves, but with Tuscan Raiders. Yeah, so I like that. that. Yeah, there were yeah, cool parts, but good. they just didn't do it right. Well, it, it's partly also that Timur Morrison is old and fat and can't do Well, he waited too long. Scenes. I mean, yeah. the problem with a lot of the stuff for Star Wars, like anything live action, is that if you're the time has passed to use these actors because Lucas sat on it. Yeah. So animation yeah. is the way to go. Like this, you can just do what you want because, you know, especially if you're mm-hmm. going to reuse characters. I mean, this doesn't really reuse too many characters that are known, but like. You can't. You need to just go back yeah, and. Yeah, I mean, they got Grandma Tarkin in here. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. He's, been, he's been dead for like twenty years, and not with the horrible CGI, which was the worst part of Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it looks that bad in Rogue One. Actually, I wouldn't have even known it was CGI if I didn't know that he was dead. Yeah, actually, it I, was. Was it? It, it looked Leia? worse with Carrie Fisher. The yes. Carrie Fisher was the one that was the worst. The Carrie Fisher yeah. one. It's just like they didn't get the lighting right. I but, like that Tarkin. Like the stuff with Tarkin being very political in this, and like. Because, you know, you see him a couple of times talking to Hemlock and bitching to Hemlock. And Hemlock's like, yeah, but Paul Keen wants me to do this project, so fuck you. I like that. And <clears> I, <throat> I like how Parkin, you know, essentially just takes advantage of it. He's like, oh, I put all the funding towards my project. Fuck the rest of them. So, yeah. Hemlock, well, and Hemlock was a little too, like, cartoonishly evil. Like, even his name is like, it's just Hemlock. like, all right, come on. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is, this is childish. Like, I liked Hemlock. Inter- but he, he, he was just uh, ridiculous. He's just like. Yes, well, we well, wouldn't want you to have to or... hurt crosshair. What's his name? Um... And he's, he's got and he's got to have a fucked up hand, you know. It's like because he needs a thing, so he's got a little hand that he holds and cradles, like he's got his little mess up hand, which I assume is a Hitler reference, but I don't know if it is. Or I not. think it's a Mengele reference. I, was a like, I think too. he was. Based did Hitler on have a Mengele. bad hand? Yeah, he Hitler did had paralysis. And, yeah. Oh yeah, Hitler, when they when they got had to the... blow him up in the end. Yeah, when they with his they didn't put. Through the briefcase close enough yeah, yeah he had partial paralysis in his left hand he was uh very self-conscious about it so if you ever watch he's always either holding his left hand or has it behind his back in uh photographs in video because oh, it shook didn't it yeah, yeah. he had like short okay. story, which yeah. i thought was from world war one I. I thought it was from when he was injured in world war one but With i don't know yes yeah from mustard sure. gas yeah i think but the tremors were some mustard gas but then he had it got made worse after that explosion so that oh, he was that? always yeah. holding well, that, it before that you see sometimes where he just have it by his side and that and after that yeah. you never did again but i figured that was what the it, but himlock is also yeah it could be mingala and then yeah that he's he's just like so like he just is like a cartoon character more so than most of the characters in the show and, yeah, and then so, yeah. naming him after poison also is just kind of like <laughs> I, I think that performance helps elevate it a little bit better especially like I think it's a testament to that actor that I did not think that that was who it was. Like that guy has range that I didn't expect. And mm-hmm. even though, like, I think the the anger Hemlock can show, especially towards the last couple of episodes, becomes a little more cartoon villain. I do I do kind of like that he's a little he's just a little like underplayed. And he's always like a little sinister in a way. I don't know. I thought he worked well for the show. Maybe if he was in a different show, it would, it would be different for me, but I, I thought he was fine. Well, I, I didn't think it was underplayed is the only thing. I thought it was over the top. Like, he was yeah. always, he was making, he was doing, like, a, like when he was angry, that actually seemed more human. It was when he was just doing his, like, his, like, I'm a cool, scary guy. I talk like <laughs> this. Everything I'm I evil. say, I whisper so you have to lean in because I'm evil. But in lock. I do think they, I, and I think they emphasized his evilness this uh, this season, like the whole leaving the troopers there. Like, like we're not even going to try and get them back. And then, well, don't call the kids by their names. You call them. Oh, 
Right. Yeah. Right. He's very clearly a Nazi. He's a Nazi doctor. Like, oh, it's very, oh, yeah. oh God, yes. Which is is good for them to do. They need to lean into that a little bit so people stop like wanting to be like, "Ooh, I'm going to be with the Empire." I'm like, uh. mm, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know what the Empire yeah, is maybe, right. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a reason why I like it. You know, maybe yeah. because they're leaning into the fascist overtones of it. I, that makes me like it more, even though there's obvious cartoonish elements to it. Like this series and Andor are my two favorite series because they kind oh, of yeah. seem to show like the real politics of Star Wars in a way other things don't. Yeah, when I'm definitely happiest cool? when Star Wars has no Jedi's. Same. Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, this show like we see a Jedi in the first episode of the whole series. Yeah, we and don't we get any more. Asajj Ventress, and that's it. That's all the Jedi's we get. And Asajj's not and even a, a Jedi. But she's not a Jedi, right? But four shoes. And, and, but even and if that's she, it. she is, like, they didn't, they showed, oh, wow, we can't match up to her. Okay, now she's gone. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. And, and Andor, same thing. There's no Jedi to be found in Andor, and that's perfect. That's exactly yes. what we want. Uh, I want. I want more stuff. I want more Blade Runner y Star Wars, like the yeah. grungy, grungy space stuff. More leftist critique. Just like <laughs> yes, really hammer it in. Well, I mean, <laughs> Star Wars, too, yeah. I think people forget, like, I make that joke a little bit, like, Star Wars, for, people forget, like, come on, they're named after Nazis. Like, they're, this is not, like... <laughs> Stormtroopers, literally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they literally <laughs> yeah. were the name of some of the worst people in history. Like, you know, it's not... <laughs> it wasn't done by coincidence, <laughs> buddy. Right, right. So, uh, cool moments in, in this... Kind of yeah. some other stuff that I I, I I really liked. I forgot about the Cad Bane. I the the last few episodes are very for at least for Omega are very focused on her being in once they find out about the M count of her being in that area with the other the other kids. Yeah. Like they, they really they really yeah. lean into that. Where well, they spent one episode that was almost entirely that. Yeah, so yeah I really that, liked that, that, but I really liked how this season focused on Omega. Same. Yeah. I, I think they did a really excellent job keeping the kids from being like annoying like they, yeah. they made they made realistic children that were actually interesting to watch like <laughs> yeah some of these shows they have a hard time with the kids getting those personalities uh, tolerable yeah. but I, yeah i really thought the kids were they added well to the overall surroundings and story agreed yeah agreed too I felt all of it was was a good at giving it more background to the world that we're in. And I think we really need that for Star Wars. Like, but like you guys said we need more stuff without the freaking Jedi. So, because we yeah. need plenty of Jedi. Even give us like Sith shit, you know? Like, just yeah. Two. We've had so much Jedi stuff. Like, this is a big world. The the Inquisitors weren't in the show at all, right? Not nope. in this season. Not we saw all, one no. of their lightsabers, didn't we? Somebody had one, or am I? Yeah, I unfortunately watch other Star Wars stuff too, so I'm like, what is what? I don't I remember, remember any Inquisitor. Okay, stuff probably Tales of the that, Empire. I that I'm mixing that up with something else. <laughs> yeah, Tales of the Empire, which I just got done watching too, by the way, not too long ago. So that's probably it because I was in the Star Wars mood and had to watch more Star Wars. I also want to talk about the Clone Commanders. I or the Clone Commandos. I like it that they're here. I really appreciate them. Mm-hmm. And also, I, I think they all pretty much get killed when the base goes down, which again makes yeah. sense that they're all put yeah. away and. They're gone, and I really appreciate that Scorch because I, I forgot this, but Scorch is in the is in all the Bad Bat seasons, and he finally mm-hmm. gets killed in the very end episode. Yeah. They shoot him up. Which we were talking about this before we recorded, but as a big fan of the Republic Commando novels, I, I hated that they just like k- turned Scorch into a bad guy and killed him. Yeah, but it, I, I hate that he. Like, I would have liked to have seen. Like I get what you said before about like, well, there are better clones, so maybe they they the chips would work better in them. But I would have liked to have seen him change. I like yeah, join the good guys. Like so at some point, at least realize what they're doing is wrong. But nope, just following orders. I'm doing it. Good soldiers follow orders. Which in the novels, uh, if I recall correctly, he's the only one of of the commandos that ended up staying with the empire when it became the empire. Oh, in the novels, he's the only yeah. one that we see. We don't get any other name drops of Fixer or I don't remember the, the rest. Right, of them. Fixer, Niner, Delta, or Delta was just Del- the game. Delta's the squad. I can't remember the fourth one's name, but it's Fixer there Niner. Was Sev Scorch. in the game. Sev, Sev, but, but Sev, Sev dies. But, Sev yeah. dies in the game. He's not in the novels. Yeah, and then someone replaces Sev in the novels. 
they get the first novel starts off with them with Seth. Well, the first novel starts off with Seth dying, but um, yeah, in the game, it was left ambiguous as to whether because they were thinking of making a second game where you'd have to rescue him. And they, they were going to make a, a game where you play as the Imperial Commandos. Yeah. So, yeah, the books, right. that got scrapped. The books, they had four of the books that were the Republic Commando books. And then the fourth one is called Order 66. And then they had the fifth book was called Imperial Commando. And in oh. that one, Scorch is the only one that is still in the Empire because the others, one of them dies and then two of them leave. Because I can't remember which one. I think it's, I think it's either, I think it's Niner maybe that ends up like um, falling in love with a Jedi. Oh, okay. And they have like a child together and then the, Je- the Jedi gets killed in Order 66. And he goes to like raise the child by himself, like with some old, like retired Mandalorians, these like two gay Mandalorian farmers that they live with. The books are really good. Highly recommend. I've always been curious about them. For until Disney made everything uncanon, the first confirmed canon gay couple in Star Wars was in the Republic Commando novels. So just worth okay. saying. But but anyway, yeah, so Scorch. I, I think that that might be why they actually use Scorch rather than one of the others, is just maybe a nod to that, but maybe not. Who knows? I mean it's it hard to know who's working on the show that's like an actual like for real Star Wars nerd, you know, and like wanted to throw in little things like that. But I figured yeah. it had to be somebody. I figured there has to be somebody on the show that was like, hey, did you guys play Republic Commando? Can we have one of the Delta Squad in this? They're like, yeah, make him be working for Hemlock. I mean, it had to have been something of that nature. Yeah. There's no reason why. This is why definitely not would. a Dave Filoni decision. Uh, that's fair. You know, d- this is not Dave Filoni going, we got to get Scorch in there. But somebody wanted Scorch. And I'm glad he was there. Yeah. It's yeah. just sad that, uh, you know, there's only a handful of characters that we see. Oh, he's dead, dead. And it's Scorch. He's one of them. It's like Scorch, Hemlock, random stormtrooper that gets stabbed through the chest through a wall <laughs> by a vibrant yeah. blade. And then we see some, and then otherwise we see people get shot, but, you know. We did see she's, sorry, I got distracted. We did see uh, that Omega's really good at gambling. Uh-huh. I did like that with the Sabacc, because I, mm-hmm. it's, and hey, she didn't have to cheat like Lando does, so, <laughs> good for her. Yeah, because I think we forget she's like in hyper intelligent. Right? Like, that's what she that's was claimed idea, for, yeah. is to be, like, a scientist. So she's, like, super intelligent, super good senses. Yeah. She's going to go to a casino planet someday and just fucking <laughs> clean that place out. Be well, to yeah. be fair, you only get so far in a casino planet before, or any casino. <laughs> like, okay, time for you to go. Yeah. Which her, uh, her, her voice actress did, like, an interview where she said that uh, she was supposed to have a bigger, like, a more ambiguous ending that would leave oh, yeah. things open for them to bring her character back, which I feel like they still could bring her character back really easily. 100% they're going they to. Like, but she she seems to think they're not going to, but that maybe they will. So I mean, they could do live yeah, action. Like, I know there's rumors that they think people think that she might be part of the Skeleton Crew show. Well, which... it wouldn't be the voice actress playing her. No, no, they would they would they would hire someone else. Let's say because the voice her voice actress is Malaysian. Uh, but I know that's the rumor is that I mean, something's going to happen with her. They they purposely didn't kill her off, and they purposely had that ending where she joined, where she's like, they need rebel pilots, you heard? Like, they're, yeah. they're going to do something with her in the yeah, future. Yeah, I wonder when future. that epilogue is supposed to be taking place, too. Yeah, they don't really, they don't they really don't say, say how many years, nothing. They don't give you and any And they don't even actual... say, like, where she says she's joining the Rebellion as a pilot, but she doesn't say, like... She says the Rebellion like needs pilots. Yeah, that's all she says, so... It's... I mean, to be fair, they always need pilots, because they go through a lot of them. They go through a lot of pilots. Yeah, like what kind of pilot? She gonna be a fighter pilot. She got a pilot like a. a she a, could just a be like ship? one of those cruiser pilots. Yeah, like you don't know her. Yeah, we don't while know what's gonna happen with her. While we're circling the topic, I'd really like to point out how glad I am that the ending didn't drown in sentiment because I think the problem with these type of Star Wars kid shows is that you have two pad of endings, and for it to be just a very basic conversation with Hunter and her, like that felt. <laughs> Right, that felt appropriate. It, it felt like it could be a real conversation between, yeah, a, more a daughter and a father. Than, but yeah, that's because they treated her like that. I mean, that's how they saw it. I mean, they saw her essentially as that daughter figure for them. So I agree with it. I mean, I I think it's a great ending to show that they're old and to show her going off so you can do more with her. And I like one other thing that you kind of that I was thinking about too is like you have those, those not the clone commando but those really special clones that Hemlock was making that have like armor that can deflect i think it can deflect blasters too well like, yeah i would hope so yeah. yeah he's making really powerful soldiers but as you see throughout star wars they don't care about they want cheap 
because they want cheap and just yeah yeah i mean you see it pop out you see it when rebels when they talk about one of the there's a thai defender thai ship that maybe i don't remember not defender but there's a ship they make that has that has shields and can take down a whole squad but they're like it's expensive we want cheap what was it what uh that said that the stormtrooper armor it's not that it's actually good at actually protecting blaster bolts but it's good at surviving so they can give it to the next soldier (laughs) <laughs> I can't remember where I heard that. I mean, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense for what they because they don't give a shit. But again, it also if you have such a gigantic reach over a galaxy with all these hundreds and thousands of planets, it makes sense that you're like, we can just conscript any fool we want to give them a gun. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but they're probably not paying them very good. So they're like, you get free room board, but you work for us. Paying them. So I, I, you know, they're lucky to be alive to serve the empire, sir. (laughs) Pay. Another thing, like when Tarkin shows up at the very end, he has shock troopers with him that aren't clones, but they have the same, like what we saw with the the red on the armor. But now it's stormtroopers with the red on the armor. Yeah, the uh, shock troopers. Which I I like that because I'm I'm big, you know big fan of those so yeah it was cool to see that like they show that he's ch- you know changing the guard and but I can't believe this whole series is only it takes place during a year that I can't I can't get behind that <laughs> yeah it it feels like longer for sure it feels so, like a couple it felt like three years or two years well, at least a lot of that is because we have so many different characters I think and when you're splitting your attention over across so many characters of the events it feels bigger. That's fair. Well, and just the fact of how much Omega changes from season one to season three. Yeah. It seemed like there was... Actually, I thought between seasons one and two, there was like a six-month or a year gap there. It felt... Because that seemed to be the biggest. Well, and I think there is. I don't know. If you look at the uh, the dates, it's like the first season is eighteen is 19 ABY, the second season is 19 to 18, and then the third season is 18. So... Oh, so it takes place over like two years. Yeah, over... Yeah, maybe over two years. Yeah. I think I like it's just that, that the show matured a lot from the first season to the third season. Also, yes, it did. 100%. Not just the characters, but the show. So, I'd like to apologize. It has started raining here, so forgive me for any noise on my oh, microphone. I don't. Hear yeah, it. we're not. I don't think we're hearing it at all. No, we're not. It's not coming through. Good. <laughs> so I, I've been reading. Wikipedia so you're on Camino, where it rains all the time? No, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> I wouldn't survive. <laughs> <sighs> I would have jumped into the ocean and drowned by now <laughs> if I lived on Camino. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'd like to everybody. Camino. I'd like to stay on Camino for a few weeks. I'd like to see if it doesn't rain all the time. Just because it's raining every time we're there doesn't mean it's always raining. That is fair. And, and the very yeah, last shot true. of Omega getting into the ship is you see her pull up Tex goggles and put them on the ship dashboard. Yeah. Which oh, is a I nice throwback, too. That's really cool. Oh. I didn't realize those were text goggles. Thank you. I didn't even that, realize. That's what the internet told me. According to Wiki- Wikipedia, Omega and Emery were both clones of Django Fett. Oh! Emery is a genetic, a female from the genetic template. Omega is an unaltered clone. So if she's an unaltered, supposed to be just like Boba Fett, how come she doesn't look like Boba Fett? Yeah, and I how mean, come is she female? Where are they getting, yeah. Where are they getting this information? Apparently from episode seven of The Bad Batch. I'd have to rewatch the episode. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Eh, I mean, I'm okay with it, but I, I think it's better to just not think that. I actually do like your point, though, that it would make sense they were cloning other people. Yeah, <laughs> They're not yeah why is everything what is, based what is on... What so special about Jango Fett? <laughs> yeah, like, they... Because they were cloning people before he showed up, and now they make <laughs> him. I guess they already paid him. They're like, well, we don't want to pay anybody else. We already got this DNA here. Let's just use it. Actually... Aren't all the Camino and I never got an answer to this before. Are they all clones? Because they call themselves cloners. Is it only because they make clones or are they all I figure, clones? Species? I figure a lot of them are probably clones. I figure they're all probably yeah. genetically engineered to some point. That's, I never thought about that. But, I got from them. I mean, they're also gone now. I mean, I don't think because there weren't any com- the Camino. Kimo- I mean, they killed them all, essentially. I think the whole race is just about gone after this. Was well, there something about there possibly other cities on Camino, but just be underwater? I think there's a mention to it, but I feel like they might have... Dist- I mean, Star Destroyers are very, very powerful. They are. They basically can glass a planet. <laughs> Halo reference. 
But why would they? Oh, is that where I got that from? <laughs> I mean, that's what if you read yeah, the Halo what, you're books. Right. I forgot. That's that. what they do to planets in the books. They, also, what they do in Halo Reach, they they what they they glass the planet. I used to read a lot of those novels. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Halo novels. God, I don't think there's a bunch. Yeah, uh, the I, early I ones read, are good. I didn't watch read the later ones, but the early ones were pretty good. Yeah, they they really were. I read a bunch of the early ones too. The first three. That we're out at all yeah. at the same time. Flood, Reach, and First Strike. Yeah, that's the same three I read. <laughs> and then there were more Onyx, Toast to Onyx, and I was like, I'm done. It was just like one little year in time where I cared about Halo a lot. That year is gone and never I think that's again. the year Halo 2 came out. I read it. Is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's when Halo mattered for a little bit in my life, and I'm like, yeah, fuck Halo. So are you going to go not, some podcast not, episodes about the Halo TV series then? Yeah, like, you're not uh, watching that. I have like, not watched it. I, I haven't even finished the games. Okay, I, hear like I, Chief Fox. I did Halo Reach. I did Halo 1. And I did Halo the show. There's an animated show. We did that. But that was early with some of the early crew. I haven't found people that care about Halo to make me want to go back and touch any Halo stuff. Up but until the Halo that I Reach, care about to talk about is Reach. Yeah. Yeah. I, up until I, Reach, I actually really was into Halo because my I had an Xbox at that point. Too, I got then I just got out of it. I gotta tell you, Mike, the only Halo I care about is the Halo on top of my head from being a good Christian boy. You understand? <laughs> I don't play those violent video games like you, heathen. I don't believe that. <laughs> you didn't say that my parents knew. <laughs> I just, yeah. Halo. I can't find anything about Camino and Survivor. Okay, I, I I'm guessing I a know. lot of them are wiped out because I, I feel like yeah. they essentially glassed the planet. Like, I think that's kind of what happened. Well, plus it would also make sense that they're not really around because if he had, if he hadn't killed them all, he would still be able to, like, he would have had a better chance at maybe getting his clone faster than 30, 50 years, whatever the hell it is. Like, yep. So instead you know, of he screwed them himself, so that I can't make it. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't smart of him to kill them off, but I think he thought he had it done, so he didn't care because he's not exactly not a nice person. So for the, um, emperor though it's a massive oversight considering how much he's supposed to be good at predicting every single thing going on but that's more in the clone wars because he's operated both sides that's true i Afterwards, mean I you know it's not hard to win a you know to when you're in charge of both commanders like okay do this all right you do this <laughs> like he was in charge of the the grand scheme of the war so that's why we think he's so intelligent because he he had control of everything but in in this case he has less he didn't he, I mean, I guess he did order Admiral Rampart, but he, I think he thought Hemlock was farther along than Hemlock was. Yeah. That's all I do. Well, knowing Imperial scientists, they probably, he probably said he was further along than he was. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm sure it's not a, a job that if, you, if you're not making results, you're, you're out the door and you're not just fired, you're murdered. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just needed another week. Yeah, he would have got together. I think he was getting closer than <laughs> yeah, we realized. Really yeah. <laughs> I think he was pretty close to that. up the plant. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it feels like with Omega, they had they had the template, and Nala say knew it because you you know in the first part of the series she keeps break, she keeps burning the blood. She knew exactly that for some reason you know that so they had the technology. They just weren't going to help the Emperor out because they didn't like him because <laughs> he killed I, their people. I think that and Nala say knew because I think she was actually trying to create a Jedi herself. Oh. I think that I think that was her pro- her secret project. I don't think she was doing it for the Emperor. I think when they were back on Kamino they were already looking into cloning the Jedi if they needed to. That makes sense. I mean, she's up to... Because she's well aware of what Omega is. She seems and to And the know fact that her name that. is Omega, Alpha and Omega, I'm the beginning and I am the end. Like, you know. Oh, yep. uh, yeah. So that, like, that all... She was the end result of whatever she was planning. Yeah, and, you know, like this is the only clone that can keep the M count. And, I mean, as we saw in Heir to the Empire, which <laughs> when, you, when you clone yourself and have the M count, you go crazy. <laughs> but that's not canon anymore. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. You you go yeah. a little nuts. He he did go nuts. I mean, Emperor's already nuts, so he might not notice it. But yes, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> well, he also became a force vampire, basically, <laughs> eating through bodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, I I really appreciate you know what they were going for, and that they they really tried to make the fucking <sighs> for, the rise of Skywalker make more sense. Well, you know what I, I I did. I'm reading about it some more. I didn't realize Project Necromancer was first referenced in um, Mandalorian season three. Oh, oh, really? That was yeah. the first mention. So, so you know when they have that like holographic shadow council, Moff Gideon's in. He's like yep. the. It's like him and a bunch of holograms, and one of them is Hux's dad. And Hux's That's dad. Hux's dad and, was yes. right. 
and 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 Paleon, Admiral Paleon is over here talking about you know we need to work on Admiral Grand Admiral Thrawn's you know thing, and then Hux is like, no, we need to work on Project Necromancer. Yeah, boy, uh, what a great name, Project Necromancer. Just that just rolls off the tongue perfectly. Yeah, I love that. Actually, I'm looking at the quote. Paleon says, "Grand Admiral Thrawn's return will herald in the reemergence of our military." And provide Commandant Hux enough time to deliver on Project Necromancer. So there we go. That's that's where Project Necromancer first. It looks like that's the first place that it's discussed. Again, they were trying to fix all the bullshit that happened. <laughs> yeah. But I also thought I thought all the voice work was really good. I mean, as as a mm-hmm. show, I felt this season wrapped up everything it needed to and put a very nice bow on. I really mm-hmm. feel that way. I mm-hmm. feel like I like I watched this as a whole thing, and I feel like I could go to anyone and go, hey. Watch these three seasons of Bad Batch, especially if you love Clone Wars and you love Rebels, and you get a nice, especially Clone Wars, and you get a nice wrap up to Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah especially D- where Clone Wars just did sort of end. Yeah. D. Bradley Baker is such a blessing for this show because even when he's sometimes doing voices that are almost borderline the same, they always have little ticks in them that give them personality. Like, he's incredible to listen to. <laughs> I I spent a long time at work kind of going through some of these episodes to just get plot points and stuff in my head. They didn't shit like like everything else. (laughs) But (laughs) like hearing him talk and the 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 specificity he can give each character with his voice is really impressive. Like it's a godsend for this show. One hundred percent. Is he he plays all the clones, right? Yeah, yeah. He's all the yeah. He's the whole Bad Batch. Yeah. Okay. Oh. According to Star according to StarWars.com, Omega is in prison for 185 days. Which in time? this season. In this season. The first time. Okay. hundred oh well you probably could count the uh ticks on the wall because you could tell they yeah, were. So the twenty so there's twenty one the yeah, there's twenty one tally marks and then she's in prison for another hundred and sixty four days before she um escapes. That's cool. That's according to StarWars.com, like a trivia game they had on their website. Okay. Oh, cool. We got our answer. So that's that's how long so just this season is. Man. Yeah. Just like part of the season. That's so just yeah, that's like, a good, what, three months? Yeah. No, that's, that. just, and that's no, not no, the whole no, season That's either. not right. I'm, count, I'm counting 60 days in a yeah, month. 30, 60, right? 90, 120, four <laughs> so months. It's like six months. Yeah. So it's like half a year. Yeah. And that's not even the whole season. So. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. What do you think the food tastes like in that th- in that place? Like my word, there must not be good no flavor. Yeah, they don't give a shit. I mean, you're most most of the people in that place are not there by choice. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to have personal items. Uh, yeah, I she thought made that's a cool. bowl out of straw, and no, you can't keep. It. I thought that's cool how they do that because that one it fits fascism, I think, pretty well. Yeah, also maybe fits communism, but hey, <laughs> but I like that it's there. I like how Emery saves the stuffed animal for her that she had built or yes. made out of hay and stuff. Uh, yeah, kooky, kooky doll, kooka doll. It's called. Oh, that was called. Something yeah, there's like a that. name on it. Yeah, yeah, it's the same one that she had on the uh, shuttle. She had an yeah. actual one. She remade it. Oh she yeah, because yeah, she, she when she goes back to the shuttle at one point, you see her snuggling it. Yeah. Right. I, like I also got to right? say this this season made me actually like Crosshair for the first time. I know well, that was I, on purpose. I've always liked his character a lot. I think he's interesting. He was. I didn't like how I didn't like him being for the Empire. I mean, it made sense and it made good story, but I didn't he, like it. Yeah, he turned very quickly towards the Empire against his brothers. But I think this one really showed how much he was actually conflicted. He just didn't show it as much because I think he saw a little bit of it in the second season. Some confliction there. Yeah. First oh, um, you didn't. <laughs> by the way, the the doll she had that was Wrecker. It was Wrecker's doll. That was Wrecker's doll. Yeah, That's in the first right. season, yeah. he had a Tuka. He had a Tuka doll called Lula. Yeah, and right. he like gave it to Omega. I don't know so, of this because they're the same age. <laughs> yes. Point. Okay. So remember, they built because at first they don't want Omega with them, and then um, that way they show that they accept her in the first season. Is Wrecker builds her a little room on the ship, and he puts his doll on her pillow. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That's what that's from. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and it's it's a little like purple stuffed animal, and it's it first appeared in Clone Wars. It was a little girl, a little Twi'lek girl on Ryloth had one. So it's yeah. basically the Star Wars equivalent of a teddy bear. Yeah, exactly. It's a little. It's it, in fact, if you look at it, it appears to be like a teddy bear version of a Twi'lek. 
It's got yeah, little... it sort of does because it's got the ears or yeah, not ears, but the head tails, t- head tentacles. I love how childish record. Can oh, be it's an actual character. animal. <laughs> really? Oh, Tuka's an animal. It's like a little like cartoon animal thing. But no, you are right, Rob. They're like they're cats, basically. They're bi- they're like they're like cats. I'm trying <laughs> to see what they first appeared in. I guess see what anyway. these cats look like. It looks very similar to a loth cat. Oh, a loth cat is a type of Tuka. Okay. Freaking Lothcat, I missed that. I was at a Star Wars trivia at a bar for May 4th, and my team got second place. We were two points out of first place, and one of the questions we missed was, I could not identify a Lothcat by picture. I was like, that's the freaking cat from Ahsoka, but I don't know what it's called. Someone did not watch enough Ripples. Hmm. It's a Lothcat. Yeah, and a Tuka is a, a Lothcat is a type of Tuka. <laughs> okay. I want Lothcat. Lothcat are a specific breed of Tuka from the planet Lothal. I do too. I have a cat looking at me. Oh, those cats. Okay, I, I do know that. Yeah. So that's what it, her doll is. It's that a little... doll is supposed to be that. I, yeah. I, okay. I like how she gives the doll to one the of the kids kid. that got kidnapped yeah. from his mother. That that scene is dark too. Yeah, because it's kind of yeah. showing like she's got to grow up. She's like, I've got to be the grown up here because these little kids need someone to take care of them. Didn't because her, her his, that little kid's mom got killed too, didn't they? When they took it, I don't. I think it's implied. Yeah. I think it, I don't think it's shown, but I thought it was implied. No, it's like not it shown. Like a blast it's shot. Definitely implied. And yeah. Cad Bane is not a nice person. So no, it just further shows why it was okay that he died. In- Cad mm-hmm. Bane's not dead yet. No, he dies in Mandalorian. Mandalor uh, or oh, Book of Boba. Not Mandalorian. Did they kill him? Book of Boba Fett. I thought he's. I didn't know he died. I can't remember. I mean, yeah, he... Boba Fett killed him. I thought. Bo- yeah, I thought Boba Fett killed him. Hmm. Wow, that shows you how much I paid attention to that show. I don't know. He may not be dead. I don't know. It, but it was only, yeah, it was like a Western style shootout. I thought it was like the best part of the show. I like not saying a whole lot. Show. Yeah. Well, I like Westerns. <laughs> I mean, I do too, but I'm just not, I mean, I really hated Book of Boba Fett, by the way. Yeah. Oh, it I had some redeeming qualities, but it's definitely one of the worst Star Wars things. Oh, it was in the finale. He fought him. Um, they said the Book of Boba Fett finale cuts away. This leaves plenty of wiggle room for the show to add a new twist to Cad Bane's Star Wars future. Oh, okay. He was that stabbed said, it is just the chest. As, that as possible that Cad Bane really did die at the hand of Boba Fett in that episode. Come on, he guys. Hey, come on. You, you're really going to call that one of the worst Star Wars things? Like, are you not a fan of Dances with Wolves? <laughs> Beautiful. No, no, I, like the dance, the, I said earlier, I like that part of it. <laughs> I'm just as overall that show was out of all like the, I'm talking about the more recent stuff like we've gotten like it just didn't click with me and I'm also a little bit <laughs> irritated that you took one of my favorite characters and just didn't make a show that could have been so much better and it wasn't so that's all I, I have yeah one. yeah you're not you're not wrong there like I liked it overall but yeah there's a lot of it, it, when you actually get into it there's a lot of problems with that show. Yeah, it just is. <laughs> you can't really deny it, even if you're a fan of it. You can't deny that it's not. It's like Rise of Skywalker. I like Rise of Skywalker. I know it's not a good movie. I just like it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. hey, you're on that episode, too. We had to have yeah. someone positive. Yes, I did. You, you needed we, somebody we, with a positive spin. <laughs> I think we were more hey. positive about it than most people. So We probably were, yes. Yeah, I think it actually. Speaking of I which, if, if you guys uh, know the YouTuber Jenny Nicholson, I do not. She, she did a really good uh, episode where she just kind of talked about uh, about Rise of Skywalker, and it's it's great. She just does these very long, very nerdy video essays, and it's really funny. She's all I, a buzz right now. She's in the mainstream news because she had a she did a uh, video about the um, Star Wars, the failed Star Wars hotel. Oh, okay. and it's oh. like I, I I watched that video like last week or maybe earlier this week. Yeah, I think it was earlier this week. I watched that video and loved it. And then, like, I go on the, I check my news feed this morning, and it's like NPR and CBS and NBC and stuff. I'll talk about like YouTuber, you know, with you know, has millions of views on her four-hour takedown of the Star Wars hotel. Like, man, geez. I saw that too. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that's her. Person. Yeah, okay, she yeah. her five point three million views in eight in the last eight days. Bam! Uh, it's a really good video, by the way. But I anyway, actually didn't watch the video, but I did read a article about that video <laughs> yeah so she has a yeah that video is really good i loved it i watched all four hours of it and then um the rise of skywalker one is only an hour long and it's really good too i saw rise of skywalker in the theater and me too me is the last you, thing i saw before covid oh my god yeah, let me, me tell you that thing was the most sparsely attended star wars screening i've ever been to people were not excited for that thing 
some guy actually threw popcorn at the screen at one point. He was so <laughs> angry. <laughs> we, we went the first day it was open. It was packed at our theater. Oh, mind no. you, we don't get a lot of great stuff at our theater. It's a small theater. Well, you're you're on an island, so yeah. And I live in a place that's only like twenty thousand people on the peninsula I live in, and it's the only theater. Okay, that oh. doesn't. Damn. I still find it interesting how I met two different people I podcast with, both that live in that <laughs> island. Yeah, that's crazy. I find well, that very interesting. What island is this? Newfoundland in Canada. New, Newfoundland. Oh, wow. Yeah. Newfoundland, okay. Yeah. I had yeah. no clue. I saw uh, it. What is the? Is it Postal News? Is that the movie that takes place in Newfoundland, where all the casts oh. are from Newfoundland? I think it is. I haven't actually seen that. The Postal News is that what it is? <laughs> I think I heard of that one. We got a the shipping news. That's what it is. The, the shipping, shipping news. news. Shipping news. Yeah, I saw that in college. Yeah. That's a good yeah. movie. Yeah. I actually watched the movie Outlander. It was filmed in my hometown. Oh, your population on your island is five hundred twenty-eight thousand people. Yes, and over fifty percent of that live in one city. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a Kevin Spacey movie. Oh, forgot that he was in that. There's an HBO documentary I want to watch about him that I just saw on Max, and I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I forgot about him. I'm actually about to play Penny. Well, it's probably already out at the time you hear this, but Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So, I will be talking about Kevin Spacey, Julianne Moore, Kate Blanchett, Judy Dench, Pete Postlewaite. Man, that's a stacked cast. I don't remember it at all. I just remember watching it in college. Does he still get hired for anything now after the assault? (laughs) I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think I've heard of anything. Man, I yes, been... he's made one movie this year. He had two movies last year. Oh, really? really? Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised I'm people so... are still hiring. It was. I mean, it's not stuff that anybody that you ever heard of, but yeah, <laughs> you're getting worse. So, yeah. He... But I guess some people will take anybody for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. He was in. He was a. He was a voice in a movie called Control. Oh, that's, that's interesting. No, not the game. <laughs> it's a movie called Control. It's a like a horror movie where like a man uh, remotely hijacks a woman's self-driving car. Okay. And and he's the voice of the he's the bad guy that's hijacked the car. He was in that last year, and then he was in a TV special, and then he's in something called Peter Five Eight this year, which looks like Re- Rebecca De Mornay is in it. Looks like a thriller. Aww. That poor, that poor woman. Like, what? Man, that's sad. But he's playing a villain again. He's a villain in this one too. Yeah. What? No. Yeah. So I guess that's what he's doing. He's like, well, now that I've been me too, I'm just gonna play villains and people <laughs> will eat it up. I mean, so he was, he was. I mean, he was his last big thing. He was a villain also. So, but House of Cards. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was a villain in that. I never watched House of Cards. I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's, but... it's 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 uh, a <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's, been he's playing like, both he's the main character, but he's he's definitely a villainous character. Yes, he's also a Republican senator of Georgia. You, so. uh, you know his villainous by his big, long mustache that he's constantly twirling and muttering. <laughs> like, while and when he literally the breaks the fourth wall and looks into the screen to talk about what he's <laughs> doing. Yeah. I did like that show at one time. I never finished it, but I remember I did like House of Cards. Yeah. I love the arc where he tied that woman to a train track. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or anything else about Bad Batch that we should mention? Yeah, about let's get the show in general. Let's just see. Yeah. I don't. I don't have much more to say about it other than that people should watch it. Give it a chance. Feel free to skip silly episodes in the first two seasons, and even in this season, there's a couple of you know somewhat skippable episodes. You'd be fine. But you probably skipped on the tentacles. You yeah. know, that was dumb, but I also like the fact that it shows the, that the Empire is doing random shit and is abandoning it and then killing yeah. everybody involved. Which, actually, which one like, is that? That's the one where he meets the three kids. They meet the three kids on the jungle planet. Yeah. Right, right. It's very throwaway, but it does it make sense. Because <laughs> they just made these vines and they're like, oh, these vines are... We can't control them. We're just going to abandon this planet to the vines and just move on. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's an empire really thing. <laughs> God, I forgot all about that. That that must be in the first half of the season. It's, huh? it's, it's like, like episode two or three, two. It's episode two, parts unknown. Episode two. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. See, I feel like you could you could honestly skip this that episode, and you could probably also skip the 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 Asajj Ventress one. Is not. I mean, it's it's good, but I feel like it ultimately didn't really matter that much to the rest of the season no it's just there to be like hey look who's look who's not dead yeah yeah it, it and felt, to show it, that it, oh well we're not we're gonna tease that we're gonna make our jedi nope we're not gonna do that and we're back yeah. where we started 
yeah, the and, fence, and like, I, I felt like it was. I mean, it was fine. I didn't have a problem with it. But oh, no, it I felt like, like it was. But it is. Yeah. Some, it is throwaway. Like you don't need. It, it felt extraneous to the season. Like what we were doing this season. I felt like really that one and the one with Phoenix Shand. I, what I really wanted was I wanted just the what was going on at the Tantus base. That was really what I was super interested yeah. in. Yeah. Well, oh, that's fair. actually the Phoenix Shand one. I did find that funny. They fought alligators and a, ma- a praying mantis person. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. Oh. <laughs> Rob, what were you trying to say? Or what were you going to say? I just wanted to say, like, in defense of the filler in this show, I still think it's entertaining enough that... Oh, yeah. If you, that, like, if you want to mm-hmm. go through it, it really won't be that much of a trying effort. Like, it never grows so childish that I want to turn it off or something like that. I, I think it's inherently watchable no matter if it's mm-hmm. filler or not oh totally yeah it was uh, i would say that like there was a lot of this show a lot of this series that i played i watched while like playing a game on a second screen but <laughs> this season in particular i mostly sat and watched like just sat and watched it like the the one with was the engaging two, the one with the two abandoned kids i think has plenty of like fun action going on in it and I like the implications that they're just kind of trapped on this like world with terrible vines that could kill them at any second. It has a lot of yeah. dramatic shake and hair in the buildup of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, if it wasn't for the Bad Batch, I mean, maybe Palpatine actually would have returned sooner. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, you're right. I or mean, did or maybe it. Haven had multiple of himself. Because I, I was reading this when I was going through. I didn't realize that Ray's father was actually one of these failed clones. It was a clone that came out fine, but without force powers. So if they could oh. give him force powers. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah, apparently it's in the novel. It oh. explains that he was actually one of these failed clones. Okay, that's Who? cool. Ray father, the one that oh. was escaping Palpatine. Oh, apparently that they makes find sense. Out she's she's a reason he ran away right, is that Palpatine be, uh, treated him so bad for being a failure because he couldn't use the force. Right. That, that makes sense because she's supposed to be Palpatine's granddaughter, so. It explains how she's the granddaughter because he didn't have kids. He just had clones. clones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because no one wants to think about Palpatine fucking. So, <laughs> well, especially after he was scared. Before that, he was a fairly right. handsome. He, fellow. he impregnated Shmi Skywalker with the Force. Maybe, <laughs> maybe him and his master. Yeah, if that's still canon. <laughs> it, it was left up to the imagination. I loved that novel, the Darth Plagueis novel. I know it's yeah. not canon anymore, but I really like that novel. I hope we get more with Plagueis to like explain like something that they make canon to explain. Make something canon it. now. Yeah. It'll turn out he was a reverse clone. <laughs> He's a reverse clone of Palpatine. What's that mean? <laughs> like a clone made in the past. Oh. Of a person from the future. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Let's not go there. That sounds terrible. And stupid. <laughs> but I could see Man, they they haven't done st- time travel in Star Wars yet. They know that. They do that uh, in yeah. Star Trek. I mean, they've done. I mean, yeah, they haven't done time travel yet. The the uh, the traveling the the like the subspace the like hyperspace traveling thing with the whales and stuff from Rebels is definitely yeah. going in that direction. You could definitely take that just a slight detour, take a, a slight left, and do time travel instead. So with no, that mechanic hit hit a ride with a whale. Yep, time whales. There you go. Time whales. Everybody oh, man. else done. They should get. Uh, <laughs> they should totally get Terry Gilliam to direct that if they are going to go do time whales. <laughs> I don't want time whales. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am excited to see what comes next with the animation with this. Like, I am excited to see what the next thing they do is. Like, they, there is the Tales of Jedi and then Tales of Empire, which is essentially season two of Tales of Jedi, which we're going to at some point do together as one show. But I have no idea when I'm going to make that happen. But that's my plan. But I can't. I have no idea. When I want to watch, because well, I watch both. Did you do Legends season two? You did season two, didn't? Legends, Legend, not Legends. So what's it? Visions. Called? I only did Vision did, season Visions. one. Yeah, we season just did one, season so, one. Yeah. So I think I did season one with you. Yeah, yeah I, I was on that episode I, two. Yeah, I watched season two. That was really good. I have never. I. I kind of season two either. Well, I think about it because I. Sir, anytime I plan certain things, I put a poster in my phone. I go, oh yeah, I need to do this. I did that back in <laughs> July 2023. So yeah, it's been almost a year. Yeah. I think uh, season two of Visions was was markedly better because it wasn't telling almost the exact same story. <laughs> like same with the <laughs> season same one with... did, did a little bit of repeat, yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, 
it's on my list of things to get to. I'm just glad this is knocked off because this was also on my list of things yeah. to get to. So. Well, this is one whole thing now, these three seasons, and it's a good show. Yeah. And I think I think we should go to Shelf Stacker Box. We've been wandering around the bush long enough, <laughs> for lack of a better metaphor. Uh, so, and Rob, why don't you go first? Yeah, hey, Conversations with Robbie Sherman. I got a, got a new episode coming out soon. Please look me up on Twitter. I have a Discord as well. I'll, I'll get that to you if you can't find it. Please come and visit me. Big things coming up. Thanks for having me, Mike. It was good and talking did, to you, Kerry. What's uh, your ranking of the season? Oh, my ranking. Yeah, I'd say a good nine out of ten. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe even a nine point five. It's pretty solid. So shelf. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And Bro, Jody, what about what you? Podcast is on. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I f- first time I watched through this one, I would say this season I didn't like as much as the other two. I had to rewatch it to really like it. And now it's shelf. Okay. But I think I missed too much the first time I watched it. I, th- I think that's the point. You gotta sit and actually watch this season because there's a lot of little things you'll miss if you're not paying close attention. No, that's fair. Completely yeah. fair. But if you do, it, now it's shelf. It's really good. And Carrie. Oh, this is definitely uh, shelf. This was especially this season, but this series in general. I think it's it's one of the best Star Wars things, and it's definitely like this. Th- this third season was the best season. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I will last. I'm going to put this on the shelf, too. I, I had fun. I enjoyed the season. I enjoyed the whole show. I was entertained enough that I watched it every day, every week. Is it pretty much, if not Wednesday, I watched it Thursday. It was pretty quick. And there were a couple of times where I actually watched this before X-Men 97 because I was excited to see this instead. So that's high praise. So, yeah, so go on the shelf. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it existed. I'm glad that we watched it. And I'm glad that we recovered it finally. So, yeah. Nice. I just enjoyed the show in general. Like, I was just impressed. But I'm also a big Clone Wars Rebels fan. So there's that, too. And, Kerry, where can people find you at? Hey, I'm on uh, Twitch and YouTube. It's Carusetta, K-E-R-O-O-S-E-T-A. I modify and repair video game consoles on there and just sometimes just turn on the share on my PS5 or whatever I happen to be playing. A lot of uh, playing Apex Legends with my son on there. But yeah, that's me. Okay. Is he still doing his Dragon Puppets? Oh yeah, yeah. He's like over six hundred uh, subscribers. Uh, his uh, it's nature p underscore dragon n a t r o p y underscore dragon. He does these dragon puppet videos, and then lately I, I showed him how to. I set up, helped him set up OBS on his computer. So now he's like streaming. Like he does like face or he's doing like YouTube live streams of him playing various games, Wobble Dogs and Apex Legends and things like that. So I, I'm glad. I'm glad he's still doing it. Yeah, I know at yeah. one point he was getting a little burned out, so I'm glad he's still doing it. Yeah, he's gotten back on it, but he's so. not doing it that often. I, I don't think he's he's like being as serious with it as he was. Which no, is don't good. don't be like me. Like, don't, yeah, <laughs> don't make as much content as I make. Like I, I tell everyone that like don't do what I do unless you just love it. To oh, oh burnout is so real. God, I feel yeah, like I've you gotta, only exactly, added. A, I, I hate to see a kid like burn out yeah. on something that's fun. Just have Especially fun with it. Kid. You know? Because I burn out on myself, I, I, I'm i like, I'm old enough to know exactly that I, what decisions I'm making, like, it's a different, th- like, you know, but a kid, no, that's different, you don't want to. Yeah, it's out. like with my, my modding video game console stuff, like, I got for a while too focused on, oh, I've got to make money with this, i got to make profit margin, and now I'm just like, as long as I make back the money I spend on it, then who cares, it's just fun. Yeah, so, you, oh, yeah. yeah that's, I mean, like with the podcast, I, I don't do this to make money, I mean, I, I make enough to pay for itself when it comes to the the hosting, but that's it. And that's good enough. I mean, I would love to see it grow, but I don't do it for that. I do it because I just fucking love it. Yeah. I love talking with people and covering content that I never would experience otherwise. Cause that's like this show, for example, I mean, just to to finish, wrap this up. Like I would not have watched the show if Carrie wouldn't have came to me and said, I like this show. And then I'm like, all right. And that's what led me. I think (laughs) I don't remember if I reached out to bad batch and that's how me and you'd met Jody. I can't remember. It might've been bad bat. I'm pretty sure this is the first thing I did with you. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think is that how I met you, Rob, too. Yeah, maybe. I I don't remember. I have a bad memory, guys. <laughs> no, it's don't fine. Trust I don't trust me. No one's been over me. I have a now. terrible memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, again, that's the show did that. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. And, you know, I mean, that's why I keep making the content, because I, I love experiencing things and meeting new people. And yeah. yeah, so. All right. And so at some point you will hear more Star Wars stuff. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Much right. less oh, he doesn't agree. We are not hearing any more Star Wars stuff. I haven't done as much. I kind of I did a lot last year. Last year was my Star Wars year. This year I've been much much quieter on Star Wars. I'm just not. It'll come back. 
I mean, if Sulka Season 2 comes out, I, whenever the hell that happens, I'll be covering that in a heartbeat because I'm excited for that. And Andor Season 2, which is uh, not until next year, for sure. I gotta say, that Sulka shit, that, that disappointed me. Like I, I loved would, it. But. Oh, okay, well, good. No, you. it's fine. I, hey, I, you're completely fair in your opinion, and other people have that. I just... I have a weak spot for Rosario Dawson, and I have a weak spot for Ahsoka in general. So that's yeah, you combine those two things, and I really like Thrawn. So it's just for me, it was a knockout of the park. But that's different. <laughs> I thought it I was. So I thought it was that. mostly good. Um, it 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 had some you know some positives and negatives, but I mostly liked it. So I. I guess I just want to wrap this up. If you enjoyed this episode, over six hundred episodes of this podcast, you can find everything we've done on Podbean. You also see all our Star Wars content in the link in the show notes. So if you want to find any of our Star Wars episodes we've done, we've done all the movies at this point. So definitely go check out the giant catalog of that. You can also search everything on Podbean. Type in Metal Gear, you will find stuff. Type in Blade Runner, you will find you will find both movies. So there's all that for you. If you want to support, shall we do a Patreon? A little dog vote in our Patreon poll. You see the link in the show notes. We have polls every month, one to two, depending on how busy I am. We also have a Discord. Please join our Discord. Chat with us. We're always happy to have new people with us. You'll see a link in the show notes for that. And I want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro courtesy of Elena at Hell Has Fear. You can follow her on TikTok, Twitch, Instagram. You will see a link in the show notes to her channels. And give a shout out to a gamer looks up for you with Bill Tucker. Definitely go support him. Great friend of mine. Check out No Meant to Fantasy. Nerds Abroad podcast, one that Phoebe has started. You'll see, she's been on the show before, many, many times. Started her podcast recently. Definitely go check her out too. Nerds Abroad, Kath, I think. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember exactly. We just started it, so definitely go check them out. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, YouTube, audio only. You can find us on all those things. Blue Sky and rate and review us wherever you get your podcast. I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye. Goodbye.